Okay, so the first one right here, it says in the image, line M is parallel to N. So this would be line M and N. So these are parallel. It says measure of angle six is 67 degrees. And then it says select all apply that apply in these statements. So it asks about like angle relationships and also angle measures. So with these parallel lines in the transversal, there are a lot of um, angles that are congruent. So like vertical angles are equal, so 67 degrees, and this would be 67 degrees. Also corresponding angles are equal, so if this is 67 degrees, this is 67, and then vertical angles equal here. So all the angles on here are either equal to 67 or supplementary to 67. So to find the other angles, we're going to do 180 minus 67, 113 degrees. Is there a problem? Go ahead. Or trade it out for one. 113. So this would be 113. This is 113. Go ahead, Gabriel. You switched the pencil. What's that? You switched the pencil. Oh, got it. Yeah. Janice, you found your spot? Two. Okay, so all the angles here are going to either be equal to 67 or supplementary. Um, if you have trouble with this, notice that all the acute angles are equal and then all the obtuse angles are equal, so you can kind of label it that way. Um, also, you're going to be doing the test on a computer screen, so it might be helpful to like sketch this out on a piece of paper and label it. So that way, as you're answering the questions, you can just look at this and it's easier to answer. So it says, which statements are true? Select all that apply. So it says six and seven are vertical angles. No, they are a linear pair um, and they are not each to seven. So that's not correct. Five and six are vertical angles that each measure 67. That is correct. Four and six are corresponding angles and they are equal. And that's what it says, cool. That is correct. So you just like click that on the computer. And then four and seven um, definitely not equal. No, they're not corresponding either. Three and five. Um, not alternate interior. Alternate interior would be like five and four right here. So, nope to this. Three and seven are alternate exterior and they are equal. And that's what it says. Cool. And then four and five are alternate interior and they are equal. Um, but it doesn't say alternate interior, it says consecutive interior, so this statement is incorrect. Um, there's also some practice on Alex with identifying angle pairs, and the reason why I assign that is because of this question right here. So as you're practicing that, consider like this is what it'll actually look like, hopefully. Um, then the next one, we have some proofs, which are fun. Um, with proofs, though, you don't have to, like, come out with the answers out of thin air. There's always, like, an answer bank of some sort. So here it says that given A, B is congruent to F, G, this is congruent to this, and B, C is congruent to E, F, and it labeled it, which is nice so we can look at it. Prove that A, C, so this whole segment, is congruent to this whole segment. Okay. Well, we are given that these segments are congruent. By the blank AB plus BC equals AC. So looking at what it's stating, AB plus BC equals AC. And using another color, FG plus FE equals this whole segment. That is segment addition postulate. So that would be this. So one is segment addition postulate. Segment addition postulate. Then the next statement, it says by the substitution property of equality, AB plus BC equals EG. Um, so what they did is since AB equals FG, they took AB and plugged it in for FG. And since BC equals FE, they plugged that in here. So that's how they got this statement, AB plus BC equals EG, substitution. Then from there, 
if AB plus BC equals AC and AB plus BC also equals EG, then you can say that this is equal to this because of transitive property. So, yeah. That was fun, y'all. No. Anyways. I think that's the hardest one of the proofs on here. It's like a lot to look at. Okay, next one right here. Pardo, mm. don't hurt yourself. Okay, um, next it says given LM is congruent to NO. LM is congruent to NO, cool. LO, so this whole segment here, is congruent to an M, like this whole segment here. I don't know, Let's see, maybe like highlight it so I can see like this whole segment is congruent to this whole segment. So we're actually looking at two triangles. It wants us to prove that this triangle is congruent to this triangle. Okay, so we have two sides that are congruent. And if we have a third side that's congruent, we have side, side, side. So here it says that LN is congruent to itself, which makes sense, like we have triangle here, triangle here, they're sharing that third side. So then we have side, side, side congruence. Also notice that they aren't talking about any angles there. So to me, even if I didn't like sketch this all out, that would be the only one it could be because they didn't talk about any angles. Unless they told me something was like a right triangle or something. Okay, next. Um, this one, it says, Michaela claims that a triangle with sides measuring 3 centimeters and 4 centimeters must have a third side measuring 5 centimeters. Which of the following possible third side lengths can be used as a counterexample in this statement? So a counterexample is a statement that proves something false. Just trying to get the wording. Proves a statement wrong or false. Proves a statement wrong, false. So, for example, she's saying if you have a triangle with these two side lengths, the third side has to be five centimeters. But we know that that's not the case. Like, if you do four minus three and three plus four then the third side has to be in between one and seven. It could be two, three, four, five, or six, or any decimal in between that. Um, it doesn't just have to be five. So in looking for a counter example, we're looking for something that proves that this is false. So it could be two centimeters because it falls there. It could be three centimeters. Five wouldn't be a counter example. It's just like the same as that. It could be six. Um, it can't be seven, it has to be less than seven, and it has to be less than that. So these are three measures of the third side. Yeah. Okay, next. Okay, so this proof here um, has to do with like side angle side and all of that stuff, which you guys are pretty good at. It says, given that AD, this segment right here, bisects this angle, CAB, um, and then it also says that AC is congruent to AB, it wants us to prove that this angle is equal to this one. Well, if we prove that these two triangles are congruent by like side angle side or something like that, then we can prove that the triangles are congruent, and then we can prove that these two angles are congruent because of corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So... Um, if AD bisects CAB, then this angle is the same as this because of definition of angle bisector. Then it gave us that those two segments are congruent. The next statement, it says that AD is congruent. Oh, sorry, I keep pushing the paper. AD is congruent to itself. So that would be reflexive property. And then looking at this, I have side angle side, side angle side. So I can prove that these triangles are congruent because of side angle side. And then the last statement to prove is you can say that this is equal to this angle because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent.
Okay, next one is pretty easy, which is nice. It says two interior angles of a triangle measure these two amounts. You guys have done a lot of practice with this. So two interior measures are 32 and 64. What is the measure of the third angle? So triangle angles equal 180 degrees. So to find that third angle, we can do 180 minus 64 minus 32, and it comes out to 84 degrees. So measure of angle three, 84 degrees. Okay, last page over here that we're doing today, over here. Okay, the measure of the triangles are shown. The value of x is blank, and then what is the triangle angle measures? Okay, so for a triangle, these three angles add up to 180. It shows that these two angles are the same measure. So if this is 3x minus 1, so is this. And then this plus this plus this would equal 180. I'm going to use the space at the top to solve this, though. So I'm going to write 2x plus 6 plus 3x minus 1 plus 3x minus 1 equals 180 degrees. Then to solve, combine your like terms, I get ax. Relax over there, Ricardo. You're getting all stressed. Plus 4 equals 180. eight and then x equals I believe it's 22 so x equals 22 that's for this first problem then for the next part of the problem um, it wants to know what the triangle angle measures are so now that we have x, we can plug that in to these expressions to find the angle measures. So like 2x plus 6 would be 2 times 22 plus 6, and then 3 times 22 minus 1. Now we have 65 and 65. So the triangle has angle measures of, there's two 65s and a 50, so it'd be this one. And a good test taking practice is to cross out answers that you know aren't right, so. Just gonna go through them. Okay, the next one, it says we have a quadrilateral. It says AD is congruent to BC, and angle one is equal to angle two. Okay, find the measure of angle B. Well, we have side angle in common, and then the shared side would be in common. So you have side angle side, the triangles are congruent. Therefore, this angle is congruent to this one, and we can set these equal to find X. Then once we have X, just plug it in to find the measure of angle B. So starting out with finding X, two X plus seven equals X plus 20. equals 13. Measure of angle B is x plus 20. So then we plug that in. We get 33 degrees. Okay, the last one is pretty easy, but the formatting of it's really weird. So I guess I'm glad they put it on the review if they're going to have something like this on the exam. It says the coordinates of an image of a point with coordinates negative 2, 6 is negative 4, 13. So this is a transformation where they're moving um, uh, the location of a point to another location. So imagine a coordinate plane. They have negative 2, 6 right here, and they're moving it to negative 4, 13. Um, so it's going to the left and then up 
So it's going like negative x up on the y-axis. So what I'm looking for is the difference between the x's. It's going from negative 2 to negative 4, so that's minus 2. So that would be x minus 2. And then for the y, to go from 6 to 13, that would be up 7. So y plus 7. And so like this is my translation rule. And then putting it in these boxes, it's looking for x minus 2. And then y plus 7 is the format it's looking for. Okay, we're going to stop there. Your to-do list is um, the Chapter 2 vocab homework on Schoology. So go ahead and grab a laptop and log in to work on that. And then if you finish that, work on Alex until um, it's time to pack up. If you have questions, please let me know. Um, yes, just sign out. Work.